I am, but I think the private kindergarten is not usual to have them eight to ten thousand dollars a year. It could depend because you don't get the free hand yeah. is, but you're you get the free hand. Right, that's true. Okay. The other thing is that um, some communities apply for and receive the state grant. However, in order to receive the state grant, you have to follow the state guidelines on how you set those rates. And it's all predicated on family income targets that the state will set for each community. And so we simply found that, that, that it would be such a sliding scale that we, we simply couldn't afford it. And so we can't accept the grant. Right. So it, it's another example of where grants look good, but in reality, it will cost us more. Uh, I'm troubled by this too, but since we're paying 100% of all our kid full day kindergarten costs okay. over the three half day with this money, and we're not subsidizing really with, with any funds from the school, from the school budget, uh, I'll, I'll support it. But I do share Nicole's concern about us. Um, being the highest uh, tuition in the area. Yeah, we have a motion. We have a second. A second. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? No. Four one with Ms. Davis in opposition. Now the bus, the bus user fee um, penalty recommendation um, for the fifty dollar penalty after August fifteenth. Uh, I hope to have a motion on that. Motion by Mr. Bowers. Can I second? I'll second that. Second by Ms. Davis. I'll just second it. For the discussion, I'll say I support this. I think to encourage people to get their payments in sooner and also help in terms of how many students we're going to have riding the buses and organizing and coordinating. I think that's reasonable. And if, Carl, if we have 600 now and you can get that down to 200 paying after August 15th, I think it'll make everybody's job a lot easier. I just have one question. I just thought of if, if a family moves into North Reading after 815, would they be charged? We can make an exemption for them, you know, and maybe feel that's appropriate. I um, think that you would want to. I think that'd be reasonable. Right, sure. And I think they, they would, uh, would have no problem with that as an extension to the recommendation. On the bright side of everybody's life, it makes more. I think I have a If all 1300 relate. Well, no, I can. De I I would definitely support you know using this to encourage people to send in their money sooner. I mean, I know this this school year we started out with the same bus routes as last year, and I know that because the bus stopped in front of a house where the kids were going to private school, and nobody was taking the bus. So on at least one of the stops on my street, there were no kids getting on. So that was eventually eliminated. But you know if we need to have this information ahead of time to right. determine the bus route. Right. I do. Right. I, I'm, I'm not going to support this. Um, I, I support a late fee, and I understand that, especially if you're going to come back in the office staff, that you're going to need cooperation. But I don't agree with the late fee being assessed to each rider. I mean, usually an invoice comes, if you're late, it's a $50 late fee for every item on the invoice. So if you've got a family putting three kids on the bus, them a pain. No, no, there'll be four fifty to five hundred. Still be a family cap. So the but he's adding fifty to each increment, right? No, 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 no. 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 So if there's one person in the family, they pay three hundred, but the family maximum only goes up to five hundred. So the worst it could cost the family is fifty dollars. Right. Have one, two, three, four, All right. five. That, yeah. I was reading this totally no. backwards. Yeah. It could have been written better. So it's I a, thought you were. Then you're getting ten thousand dollars. I, I'm estimating that 200 people will still be late. 200 families will be late. Okay. I feel bad for families that are, are late. I can understand if they're dragging their feet, but some of them just, August rolls around and you're buying back to school stuff. And for some families it's difficult, so. Too bad they don't have a boosters club we can send them to for support on the bus. <laughs> yeah. bus. The, the, the transportation <laughs> boosters. Uh, well, we have no an environmental, just, environmental no. boosters. Yeah. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Right. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Unanimous. Who was the motion and who said uh, Cliff, Cliff and Nicole. Nicole. Oh, yeah. okay. I was going to vote for them. Okay, and finally we have the facility use fee. 
where we're going to increase the current uh, gym fee, the gym fee at the high school from $25 to $30 for four hours, gym fee at the uh, elementary schools and middle school from $15 to $20 for four hours, um, the high school auditorium rental fee to $200 for four hours, the classroom rentals to $25 for four hour use, then for the custodial staffing, increase the time and a half charge to $40 per hour and increase the holiday details to $53 per hour. Motion by Mr. Bowers. Second. Second by Ms. Vaca. Kyle, one quick question. How much how much holiday use do we have in the facilities? Uh, not a lot. I, I just thought it was appropriate to include it in the motion. Uh, uh, I know that there was some holiday use on King, on, on King, King Day. Day. And um, it's infrequent. Okay. All right. Any further discussion? We have a motion and a second. Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Okay. Unanimous. Come now, athletic fees. Yes. <laughs> if I could, Mr. Chairman, let me just describe the context of this. Um, I'm just waiting for my injury. Um, no, I, I'm going to be joining too. Uh, I don't think that the school administration is recommending this, but rather I was asked in November to uh, uh, calculate the costs of what it would be if we charged uh, each sport the cost to make it self-supporting. And the information shown in the extended large sheet is fairly self-explanatory, but just a minute on, on a couple minutes on how this was developed. Worked with um, uh, Mr. Johnson, the athletic director, and looked at every single invoice over the course of a fiscal year. Hundreds, hundreds of invoices, and we earmarked every single invoice against this board. So that was step one. Uh, there were invoices that did not belong against the sport because it was more of a, you might call it a, a general expense for sports in general. For example, the, the costs of Cape Ann League membership, you know, and there are things of that nature. So those general expenses are found in the general expense column, and they are proportionately charged against the participation levels of that sport. Um, as is the train cost of training, is charged proportionally against all sports. I didn't try to make a determination for which athletes use the trainer. The cost of the equipment manager is charged proportionately, and um, as as is coaching, which would be rather self-evident. Uh, the only costs that don't show up in this spreadsheet, and I could easily add them, but I didn't know what the committee's druthers were. I did not include the cost of the athletic director and the athletic director, director's salary in these sheets, only the expenses to run the sport. So um, then you do the math, and you can see that, as you would expect, the two most expensive sports are football and ice hockey. The least expensive sports are right cross country. Actually, the wrestling, soccer. The wrestling because it's shared. Right. And soccer is quite low because of the high participation. And, and wrestling because of the shared facilities with Linfield. Um, and basketball is boys and girls. It's the only one. It's mixed. Yeah. All the rest of it. For the benefit of the public, the cost per athlete ranges from a low of $214 for the wrestling program to a high of $1,078 per athlete for boys ice hockey. Kyle, um, was any consideration given to this on um, uh, receipts from, from gate right. at all? No, that, that could be done too. Okay, because um, I, I think for the, the four sports that I see that you, you actually do receive uh, a considerable amount of money is basketball, football, hockey, and volleyball. Yeah. So all those sports do, do produce some revenue. Right. Um, that probably should be taken into consideration as an offset against sure. the uh, 
cost of the individual sport. Are those the only four, Jerry? Those are the only four that we charge for, yes. I agree. Uh, currently. You know, I think what we wanted to do was get this out, um, and if the committee would like um, further investigation of this, then I'll do it. You know, at this point, I wanted to just kind of get out, uh, fulfill the request, mm -hmm. and uh, what it costs. I mean, I would guess the biggest set off is basketball because that's probably the, the, the most game receipts. I mean, given the number of games, given the number of games, given the number of people that attend, right? Um, and then perhaps after that, volleyball, football, and ice hockey probably last. Yeah, well, the, the hockey. Possible. Interestingly, though, hockey is, not, is a, so many hybrids you learn here. Uh, boys hockey, of course, is at Burbank. Right. Mm -hmm. Girls hockey is at Wilmington. The Burbank gym keeps the receipts. They keep on. Yes. Near the, more, the most expensive rink is Burbank. Uh, it's that's part of the contract. The that's what they that's what they require for. Is that in addition to the full cost of the ice time, or is there any kind of a? Uh, Set off on the ice. It's time. a set off. It's a, it's a set off. Okay. All right. Yeah, I, I knew the receipts for hockey weren't great because I knew there was a deal where, even when we were at Merrimack College, the, the, the rent kept some of the receipts. And they charge them what? It's $7 a person to go to. I think it's the most expensive I, sport to attend. My husband and I and yeah, one kid hockey. would go to watch a game and go to every one of your son's games and you could spend $50 in a week. Now, yeah. I, I know that. Um, we, a we asked you to do this. And by the way, this is great work, but yes. uh, yeah. it really is. Yourself. It's going to be useful to have And I, I know we're not going to vote on it tonight, but but I, I can just say that, you know, fundamentally I'm opposed to it. And I, and I do know, for example, they put this kind of system into effect at Hamilton Wenham two years ago where they're charging different costs per sport. And I know that it's pretty much wiped out the freshman program of all of their sports. And I think that's the last thing that I want to do is to start putting more kids on the street because parents don't want to pay a thousand dollars for a freshman to be playing freshman or JV hockey or freshman basketball or paying six seven hundred dollars. Uh, and and when I look at a community, communities like Hamilton and Wenham, where they're having this kind of problem, which are you know fairly fairly wealthy communities, I think is a good way to, to put it. I, I just I just wonder what would happen if we put this kind of system into effect here. It would really, it would severely limit the boosters and how much they could support kids too, because we're talking a lot more money here than than we're spending now. I, I think this is useful if we were to move to a hundred percent self-supporting system, which I wouldn't endorse. Right. But um, if we did move to athletes paying to play, then this would be most useful because, take for instance, you mentioned ice hockey. You've got a child playing in the in town league, you're spending over a thousand dollars. But the second highest is. Play.